Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Danielle and today we'll be discussing some big tongue twister terms, so stay with me. We'll be talking about orofacial myofunctional disorder, obstructive sleep apnea, and the positive outcomes that orofacial myofunctional therapy can have for patients who exhibit both of these disorders. Um, before we get into this topic though, it's really important to remember, I always remind my patients, I am not an otolaryngologist, I am not a sleep specialist. It's not within my scope of practice to diagnose a patient with um, disordered sleep breathing or OSA. It's not within my scope of practice to explicitly treat OSA. What is within my scope of practice though is to work with patients who have orofacial myofunctional disorder. And what research has shown us is that orofacial myofunctional disorder and obstructive sleep apnea oftentimes sleep disordered breathing can be comorbid. Now let's define some terms before we dive into this bigger topic. So sleep disordered breathing, there's a great article on the ASHA website by Nicole um, Arkinbow, which is wonderful. And she gives a great definition, which I love, which is that sleep disordered breathing re refers to a collapse at any level in the upper airway, resulting in abnormal breathing patterns during sleep. Sleep disordered breathing can reduce oxygenation of the brain, changes in neurophysiology and function, and results in a lack of restorative sleep that's essential to optimal daytime functioning. So obstructive sleep apnea um, is something that falls on this spectrum. Um, obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep-related disorder that involves a decrease or complete halt in airflow despite an ongoing effort to breathe. And it occurs when the muscles relax during sleep, causing soft tissue in the back of the throat to collapse and block the upper airway. That definition is from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. And then um, our definition of pediatric sleep apnea comes from the Mayo Clinic, which of course it's obstructive sleep apnea in children. And it's a sleep disorder in which the child's breathing is completely or partially blocked repeatedly during sleep. And the condition is due to narrowing or blockage of the upper airway during sleep. So breathing is such an important part of life. I oftentimes tell families, you know, the most nuanced thing that a baby learns to do before they exit the womb and enter the world is learn to breathe, suck, swallow. And swallowing and breathing are things that occur um, often together and in conjunction, obviously in early life, throughout our lives, if you start paying attention to when you breathe and swallow. And they're really essential to functioning and surviving all the way in, until the end of a person's life. So it's so important that we, that we pay attention to how our patients are breathing and also the ways that they're breathing when they sleep. There's a lot of great research coming out that shows us the importance of sleep. A book that I love that I highly recommend to patients is by um, Dr. Walker at Berkeley and it's called Why We Sleep, The Power of Sleep um, and dreams and talks about just a lot of health concerns. The, the risks for disease and so many ailments skyrocket when we're not getting good sleep at, light, at night. And a reason that many patients don't get good sleep at night has to do with their airway function and if they're actually capable of that. And sleep apnea can be a big culprit. So it's while it's not within my scope to diagnosis or explicitly treat it, I oftentimes, um, you know, any patient interview that I do, there's a whole section on sleeping and breathing. And if the patient doesn't know, we talk to their partner or caregiver to learn a little bit more. So today I wanna to talk specifically about working with patients who've already been diagnosed with some form of disordered sleep breathing, specifically in this case, obstructive sleep apnea, um, who also have been diagnosed with an orofacial myofunctional disorder because research has shown that myofunctional therapy can be really beneficial for these patients. So today we're looking at a study that comes out of the University of Sao Paulo, and it's by Felicio et al. It was published in 2018, and it was a literature review. So their team went ahead and they reviewed 11 different studies that had been conducted to look at myofunctional therapy and obstructive sleep apnea, both in adult patients and in pediatric patients, and they found that myofunctional therapy could be a really helpful adjunct um, treatment. This doesn't mean that you get rid of the CPAP or that it takes the place of a CPAP, but it really helped patients find improvement from their symptoms, um, whereas all therapies don't necessarily promise that. So the study showed that myofunctional therapy benefits patients, um, adult patients with sleep apnea in the following ways. It resulted in um, reduced severity of obstructive sleep apnea overall, reduced um, severity of snoring, decreased apnea hypopnea index, also known as um, AHI, 
um, reduced arousal index, improved subjective symptoms of daytime sleepiness and sleep quality, and improved quality of life. So that's a big list. Um, myofunctional therapy also was found to benefit patients, um, pediatric patients with obstructive sleep apnea, also known as PS or POSA. Um, and the following were found in the pediatric population. Myofunctional therapy helped decrease apnea hypopnea index, AHI numbers, and increased oxygen saturation, and patients participating in myofunctional therapy improved their orofacial myofunctional status. So again, while myofunctional therapy isn't you know, the end-all cure-all magic wand for patients with obstructive sleep apnea, it can be an incredibly beneficial tool um, in improving not only some of these very significant um, indications of, you know, sleep at night, like their AHI numbers, but overall their quality of life. So I'm passionate about working with these patients and teaming with other professionals who are serving and supporting them to make sure that we are giving them tools and strategies um, to live their healthiest lives possible. If you have more questions, I have a list of resources and um, links to all of these articles on my website. You can go to daniellecleeslp.com and you can also check out my Instagram, daniellecleeslp, for weekly tips, strategies, and updates um, on the latest research in the field. Thanks so much and have a great day.